G'day, my name's Darrell Webb. Today we're going to have a look at the Infrared FH35R, the Finder 2 with a built-in range, range finder and a 640 sensor. Um, I think you're really going to enjoy this uh, review because I've really enjoyed this product. I think it's fantastic. Anyway, we'll go over its specs, we'll go over its build quality, um, we'll have a look at how it interfaces with its um, Wi-Fi and works in the app, and we'll check out how it does through HDMI. And over the video, I'll lay over a whole heap of clips so you can see all film with this, so you can see what it looks like at foxes and rabbits and kangaroos and all things at different distances. Anyway, on that note, let's get into the video. Alright, so when you buy this, it comes in this little box. There's a separate box sleeve in there and it comes with um, in the box it has the finder it has the power adapter USB cable HDMI cable a charging dock two times batteries a storage bag a hand strap a neck strap manual a lens cloth there's also a strap for the carry bag in there as well I'll set that aside so this is the little bag I'm talking about got a strap and that on there it's actually a nice little bag it's got some belt loops but most importantly it's just like a little quality camera bag it's got um you know sort of five to seven mil of um foam padding in there okay so i already put the neck strap on the unit so it's pretty easy it actually has a little fastener in there to hold it in place so of course the actual device let's sit that there for a second um you'll get couple of these batteries, one's over here on, in the unit, you get a little charging dock. Um, they only drop in, they only go in one way, so you can't do it wrong, and it has some little lights in there, and when they're flashing, it's pretty much like your little UHF radios you buy. Uh, it just runs off USB-C. And what else is in there? Um, there's a USB-C lead came with it, a little infrared branded one amp USB outlet with an Australian adapter. Um, there is a little wrist strap. They're interchangeable quickly. You can just disconnect them. So you can change between the neck strap. They use the same clip. Uh, you can change between the neck strap and the wrist strap quite quickly. That's nice. Um, you got a HDMI lead. Mini or micro HDMI to HDMI. And you get a book. So, I'll move this bag out of the way. I've got stuff over here now, haven't I? All right, I'll move some of this out of the way. Let's have a look at the actual finder and the book. See the finder there. All right. Um, the book is really, really well written. Um, probably written by a native English speaker because it's, um, it doesn't feel like it's been translated. It feels like a proper book. And it has all its specs there. It has everything you need to know, how to go through all the menus, the different lights, the sensors for the eyepiece, how to charge things, how to power things remotely, the HDMI lead. There's all the info in there you need to know. Um, it also gives you the button operations, what every button does in different scenarios. But um, I won't go in depth for that. Let's just have a quick look at specs. Because I know people want to know the specs, specs of the device. So, the model, it's a FH35R, it's a 640 by 512 sensor, it has a pixel size of 12, um, the net D's are less than 35 millikelvin, it has a 50 hertz frame rate, the objective length is 35 millimeter with a f1.0 aperture. Field of view is 7 point, oh, sorry, the field of view is 12.6 by 10.1. Um, optical magnification, so when you digitally zoom in, you've got four times digital zoom, so you can go up in steps of 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5 and 4, and they work out equivalently to 2 to 8 times magnification, so the base mag is 2, um, which I think is important for a, a, a scanner. Um, the min minimum focusing distance is 1 metre, the focus range um, of the eyepiece for the diopter, there is minus 5 to plus 5. Detection range for a human sized target is 1818 metres. It has an OLED display, um, which is at uh, 1024 by 768 pixels. Um, the operation specification is a lithium ion battery pack. Max battery life is 5.5 hours. Laser range for an array, 800 metres plus or minus 1 metre. Uh, amount of built in memory is 32 gig. It's app compatibility, it has support from the app. Um, dimensions are 160 by 90 by 50. The weight is less than 400 grams, so there's um, IP68, you know, ingress protection. And operating range for temperature is minus 20 to plus 50. So that's all very nice and a nice little well written book. Um, we'll go over the unit and just some of its um, features. 
So, it's got a metal, metal lens cap and a 35mm metal metal lens. It's focusable. Um, if you're focusing at something close, you definitely have to use it as blurry. But I found once I'm sort of focused out past about 30 or 40 metres, um, everything's in focus. It's like infinity focus. So you're not constantly playing with it. If you're looking across open paddocks, you pretty much set it once and you leave it. You don't touch it again. Um, it has a built-in rangefinder, obviously. Nice metal cap, 35mm built-in rangefinder. Now the battery. This is sweet. Or is the big part. Inside there is a... You pretty much press it and turn it and it comes out and it can only go in sort of one way but to find the notches there's a red line on there and there's a red line on there you just mark, match them up push it in push it down turn and put it back in so that gives you five and a half hours or says up to um always it's all going to be depending on how much wi-fi you use and how much um you know what you're doing with it obviously if you've got the range finder on constant then you're probably going to use a bit more battery um underneath here these plug up really good because they're hard to get open. Right. <laughs> Come on, open. Uh, no fingernails in that hand. All right, so you've got the little micro um, HDMI and you've got a USB-C. So you can power it through that. You can also plug that into your PC and communicate with it to get files off there. There's a tripod mount under there. Um, as I said, there's a little lanyard strap. It's the same type clip. At the moment, I've got the neck one on, which seems to suit me, but there is a hand one there as well you can use. And you've got four buttons pretty much to the interface. I'll go over quickly roughly what the buttons do, but I'll show you a little bit more about that when I show you on the uh, monitor on, with the HDMI so you can see what's happening on the screen. So there's a power button, there's a menu button, there's up and down buttons. Um, the basics of it is, uh, obviously hold the power button in, the unit turns on. Um, if you, once the unit's on, if you quick press it, it goes into sleep mode quick press it and it wakes back up the menu button if you click that once quickly it'll come up with like a sub menu and you can pretty much change the things like zoom and you can change color palette quickly uh, if you press it again quickly there's also um, you can change the screen brightness and the uh, sharpness if you long press it you get the full menu um, while you're just in normal scanning mode and you're looking around, if you press this button here, it will turn on the range finder and then it displays on the screen. You can choose between um, constant ranging or um, just a one, one shot. I usually leave it on constant because it just keeps on updating. That's good. Um, to turn it back off, you just hit the power button once and it turns the range finder off. Um, at the back, uh, traditionally like the other ones, the other infrarays I've used, there's a camera button. Um, and if you long press it, it starts uh, recording video If you long, and it'll stop it, you long press it. And if you just press it once, short press, it will take a photo. Um, build quality wise, okay, so we've pretty much got a construction of hard plastic and metal. There's definitely some metal parts in it. Um, there's definitely some hard plastic parts. Um, the heat sink and that's all metal. It's got a rubberized gripping thing, so it gives, definitely gives you a bit of grip when you're using it. Um, the buttons are all very, very tactile there's no audible click but they definitely you know when you're pressing them, they're quite firm they're not easy to press by mistake i'm not sure if they actually need to be as firm as what they are but you definitely won't press them by mistake which is handy um you got your little adjustable diopter um i find that gives me the range where i'm seeing super clear quite easy you can find it quite easy uh, the eyepiece is very comfortable it can be rotated for left or right eye use um whatever your dominant eye is um, it's very comfortable and it does have to do a good job of sealing up any external light coming through if you're in a vehicle or something like that Build quality all in all it's pretty much like I've come to expect from the other infrared stuff that I've reviewed and, and have used is it's um, It's built quite strong. This one has got a bit of weight to it. This one's a little bit like a tank um, if You hit someone over the head with this I'm not suggesting you do that But because you probably damage the unit, but I think you'd probably hurt your whoever got hit over the head with it too um yeah it's definitely got a bit of weight and it, it feels quite substantial it's got the whole thing's got a little bit of a premium feel about it um it just definitely feels up the build quality and everything it just feels yeah a little it's a little bit classy um very functional but um, definitely a bit classy but just to go over the main things that the, you know sort of the biggest selling points and the big key things are 35 mil lens two times in base magnification 640 sensor and um, a built-in laser rangefinder. Another feature that they had that, that was new to me that I hadn't come across before on the on the on the more budget models is um, the, the the sort of the clear mode, the, the clear ultra clear, or whatever they call it. Um, 
pretty much it's for situations where there may be fog or rain. Um, I have tried it out in a little bit of rain and it definitely was an improvement. It sort of just boosts the contrast and just cleans the image up a bit. So that is definitely worth having um, and it's something to muck around with because, it, yeah, picking up the contrast, it's, uh, it's quite unique. Um, and I said it isn't, hasn't been in the other menus and it, uh, it, I do find it somewhat helpful. Alrighty, so we've got a nice clear night here and I'm just going to join the Wi-Fi on here so you can see how the uh oh there you go so it's automatically connected yeah all right so then let's go back on that we will open the infrared outdoor app um it's home you can sort of see all your stuff there you can do device files photos tools all that we'll go for viewfinder so it's just connecting to the device and there is a nice clean image now this is what i've um was what i wanted to show that um this is why I'm doing it this way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in landscape mode because this is the way I use it on my tablet when I'm um, sort of remote viewing. So I set my tablet up in my car and this is exactly what I look like look at through my tablet. So you can see on the left hand side you've got at the top you've got um, a rangefinder, you've got a microphone, you've got uh, the aperture, um, you know the shutter function, you've got the little picture of the, of the sun there that's showing that um, what color palette's in on the right you've got photo or video you can change we'll change that to video and you can start and stop recording so what we'll do on here is um i'll just show you so you can actually see now we're looking at this scene um i'll just move that camera a little bit the house there in the middle is at i believe over 500 meters but you know what we'll actually test it we'll put the rangefinder on and now you can see so what i'll do is this is awkward to do a little bit one-handed but i'll um i'll listen it off and put that on the house there you go we've got 525 meters onto that house so you can see that little box is the actual range finding square um, i'm just trying to run this as loose as i can without it moving around by itself so you can clearly see those kangaroos and whatnot out there at 500 and let's see if we can get a range off some of them 441 438 well, there's someone over there walking their dog and scared all the kangaroos away but you can clearly see the rangefinder how that sort of works now i'll just turn the rangefinder off you can just touch that button <clears throat> um if you want to record with audio you can click the microphone and it records the audio uh, as I said, you got to you can just manually do the shutter. Now you can also do over here. You can go to the color palettes, so you can see that's the white hot. It's got a picture of the day for white hot. It's got a, a moon and stars. Um, that is black hot. You can see you can see quite clearly out there. Black hot. Uh, let's go red hot. Again, it's sort of um, quite obvious with the red hot. Those kangaroos are really popping. Let's go to the uh, highlight. That sort of just makes it a bit more contrasty and just makes the the whites pop a bit more. And um, but this is rainbow, and that's uh, I'm not a big fan of that one. Um, I'm surprised actually. I quite like the blue one. It's sort of like almost like I'd nearly say blue monochrome with um, with highlights in red and yellow. But um, that one's actually usable. But at the moment, with this um, high-end sensor, I've been really enjoying just using the white hot. Um, as I said, I'll just turn that range finder on again, and we'll just move that around and look at some of those kangaroos, the distances. 436 metres to that rear there. Let's see if we can go over to this person and their dog. 430 metres. Um... There's a big tree up there. What's that at? So we can bounce off the tree. 489. Let's go over some trees over further over there. 602 meters. Uh, that's probably the trees getting further. 610. 612. Oh, that one's closer. Let's try and lift and go up some of these high ones. 886. There you go. Look. So the rangefinder is meant to be an 800 meter rangefinder, but I have found I've, I've, I've hit things out at over 900 meters. Um, so. Um, I think when they give you that 800 metres, that's it's, it's accurate within plus or minus um, one metre at, at um, out to 800 metres. After that, maybe it's not quite as accurate, but 
as you can see it's having no problem finding ranges um, also obviously actually let's this way now because there's probably more out there okay now obviously down the bottom left hand corner we've also got down here we've got the zoom so we can just slide that along in the app 1.5 you can see that dog quite clearly there let's go to two you can see the person and the dog 2.5 you can still see you can actually see there um, i've sort of found up to about three times magnification is good after that i don't really see much more detail but um there's those distances there that's out at sort of you know over 300 meters and there's a person quite clearly and there's his dog which you can see his legs tail with three times zoom at over 300 meters so that gives you a good idea um let's wind that zoom back of what this unit's capable of um and now that it's all in the app is is quite good because um you used to have to put a hdmi cable with this in the app it's showing as i said you can turn your range finder on and off you can change your color palette you can change the zoom you can stop and start recording um this is a this is a big big difference and um compared to the, the other models i've used that go to the app and the other thing it is the app um even on my old tablet i got like a ooh, galaxy galaxy samsung galaxy tab a from like 2016 2017 the lag is very minimal um you move it and it's within you know, a quarter of a second the screen moves so yeah the the, the lag's hardly worth mentioning but uh and obviously it's focusable um, but as you can see I've got that range finder on it sort of you know things are clear at 70 meters um, those houses over there at 150 meters everything's in focus right out to over sort of 500 meters so I'm not really having any dramas with the focus if you've got a coming something closer you do have to focus it but that is a good breakdown of the app and it um, really shows off how how much they've advanced the app with this unit and what it's capable of as i said i've been using this uh remote mounted to my tablet um in the in the vehicle with me and um, i've been really really enjoying it it's, it's got uh, great clarity through the app not as good as the eyepiece but still very very good and um, as you're seeing in this recording and the rangefinder function everything displayed on the screen and you can sort of start and stop recording um, you turn your rangefinder off change the color palettes all by the app that is great okay so um, this is hooked up to a little hdmi screen i'll um i'll turn the unit on now okay now you can see what i can see all right i'll just um not really looking at what the image is in the background there that's just my car outside okay so i was trying to make this thing move around too much that's a shutter refreshing so we can see it there now you can see up in the top down top left hand side of the screen there you can see the sun icon that's the color palettes on it's a one-time zoom the uh shutter's on auto and the microphone is on um down in the bottom left hand side there you can see the time and date the right hand side it is showing that the hdmi out is on and the top right hand side is showing the video uh, the battery capacity still so basically if you turn the range finder on you press one time and the range finder will come on you can see a little blue square there in the middle of the screen and it's showing the distance down the bottom there so that little blue that little number down there the three dots show that it's in um, constant scan and that is the distance six meters and that little square box is what it uh, actually is looking at um while we're looking at that menu so now from there as i said if you just press the uh, power bus button once it turns off the uh the laser range finder we'll go quickly so if i short press the menu this is, these are the features that um you're going to use a lot you short press it and you can see there straight away comes up with the top it's got the magnification and the bottom's got the pallets so if you just short press the bottom the, the, the down button it will change through oh yeah, I waited too long so you press the menu button once and then we'll press down to go through the different color palettes so you can see there now it's on um, moonlight so that's black hot uh, red hot highlight that's rainbow and that is a blue color I'm quite keen with that one it's uh, like uh, blue monochrome with highlights but for all intensive purposes I find I switch between the white hot and the black hot the most now if I press the menu button again there it'll bring up the screen brightness you can adjust and the sharpness so I've got it set for 
roughly sharpened. I find about three is pretty good, and about three brightness seems to work pretty well for me. Um, if you press the uh, menu button again, oh, okay, so it's got, it disappears by itself, but yeah, short press, it takes that, short press again, it goes through them, short press again, it disappears. If you long press the menu button, then all of a sudden you get all your menus. So I won't go through exclusively, um, but there's the um, ultra clear mode. Um, there's your Wi-Fi. That's your HDMI out. Um, that one there's picture in picture. I will show you that one. So while it's there, if you just press the menu button, switch over to, to picture on picture, and you can now see um, it just takes a box out of the center and shows that. If I make the menu go by again, it'll turn that back off. Um, when you, I'll show you that because when you, um, when that's on, and the picture in picture, if you turn on the rangefinder it pretty much shifts to the center what the, what it's showing in the picture in picture is the arrange finder box in the center of the screen so that little bit of that there is that so it makes it it is very handy to use the picture in picture when you're um trying to uh get a range on small animals all right so we'll go back into that menu again um i'll turn that picture in picture off there is some other functions here um, you can do quite a few things. There's a compass and you can show all that type of stuff So I'll turn that on there. You can see there's sort of a compass for the unit up there shows you which way you're facing And there is also so you can leave all these on and have everything on at once pretty much if you want But there's like an inclinometer. So if you're taking uh, Cross gully shots and all of a sudden you want to see by you know how many degrees am I leaning down or, or up um, for range uh, estimation and um, getting a, a you can you can use that and it will actually give you quite a good um you know hand on the ang on the on the angles all right so i'll just drop out of that i'll go back into the main menu just long press that again short press that tightens it off um there's a lock screen there's a microphone as i said that's on there is more across the bottom the so aperture is at the auto there's also manual um, another useful thing that i found there is the cool white and warm white so i've been running at cool white but i must admit it goes to a yellow white i'm not sure if you're seeing that there i'll change that back to cool white again oh. so it's on warm white cool white yeah this screen's not showing it very well basically what it is is when you're looking through it you can give it to a warmer color temperature it goes a little bit it's not quite so crisp white and it gives you a bit less eye fatigue um so i've been using it on um cool white just because i've um been playing with it and i'm trying to get the ultra sort of as clear as it's gonna be but there is a um as i said you can change it to warm white as well which is quite nice if that's your thing um and then there's a few other little things and you can you, know, you can do um repair a pixel or delete a pixel if you've got say if you've got a dodgy pixel you, pixel um a burnt out pixel so it's in one individual pixel it's not working you can delete it and things like that and besides that there's information um about the device and um and also a factory restore yeah so pretty pretty simple um i said you sort of once you find the way to use it you focus it and then i said the quick things that you're going to want to use are the zoom and the color palettes um zoom wise out in, in the real world i found um pretty much oh, just in the range finder on now i found pretty much um i don't really go much above three there's still quite a bit of detail there. It's handy sometimes you can get a sharp focus, but you can actually read the badge there. It says exceed. Um, I find I don't get much more information from four, but I don't know, maybe some people will, so I won't knock it. But as you can see at one, there's a lot of information there in this sensor. Uh, another quick thing, talking about the image. Um, the image, like with the other devices um, that I've used from Infrared, it looks... There's definitely more information when you're looking for the eyepiece. Um, I know the file resolution coming out and the save files either on the app um, or of HDMI, um, they are the same resolution as what they're recorded at in the device and what you're seeing of the eyepiece. But 
I definitely find, I'm not sure if it's because of the smaller screen, it definitely looks a lot better image with more information when I'm looking through the actual device. Um, with that said, the app, they've done some good improvements on the app and I can definitely see a, an upgrade for how much you used to lose, but the, the, the best quality and the most information is in the information, uh, is when you're looking through the IPs. You see more detail on that than you do from either the HDMI or the, uh, the the, the, the save videos or recorded videos either by the device or by when you recorded it through the app. Pros and cons. Um, I'll start off with some cons. Everything that I've sort of found about it, um, there was some cons with how it interfaces originally with the app, um, how it didn't show distance and things like that on the app. So if you were remoting it, remote man, mounting it, it um, didn't show the distance. But they're not, they're not cons anymore because um, infrared, as you've seen, they've addressed that. Um, now, when you're, when you're looking through it, you do have the distances and you can see your settings and you can fully control it by, um, by the app. So that's no longer a con. I think the only one that's sort of still there, it's not a big one, um, it's probably more important to me because I do stuff on YouTube, is that it has a built-in microphone and you can go through the menu and you can turn it on. Um, but when I try and play that back uh, through my phone, um, the phone says file format not recognized um, when I put it in my laptop um, it's um, it sort of just didn't play no audio the only place I haven't tried it yet and if it does work in there I'll update it I'll put some text up here or something is maybe in the video editor it might be a strange format but um, for all intensive purposes I found that the microphone doesn't actually record any audio um, as I said for a lot of people that's not a problem um, it's just a shame it would have been nice if it recorded the audio because you know for someone like me who makes videos that um that comes in handy very much so um pros well some of the pros are definitely those things that um i just spoke about is in now when you use it through the app you can see all that information you can change color palettes and stop and start recording and um you know you can see the late laser laser range finder uh read out through the screen so now you can sort of even if you're um sticking this out the window even if you're not remote mounting it you will get a sore neck if you're on this for sort of 10 hours of scanning so the ability to just have it there and have a, a screen a tablet or something on your um on your dashboard of your car or on your handlebars of your quad bike or however you're using it um you can actually see all that info now so that's a massive con uh, a massive pro um some of the other pros definitely interchangeable battery that's nice i know when you go to these bigger sensors and then especially when you have a range finder built into it they do chew a bit of battery the fact that they've made it so you can change it um, I've found, I've sort of gone through, that's about how long I've used it, I've used two batteries worth. So, and I'm finding uh, with heavy Wi-Fi use, I'm still up around that five hours per battery. So 10 hours, you know, that's pretty much, that's a big night on, on, the, uh, on the glass, you know, looking around hunting. So this is going to do most people, and it comes in the packet with it, you know, so the little charging dock and two batteries. That's just a huge pro. Um, the rangefinder. The rangefinder is really accurate, and for the quality image you're getting, in a lot of other, you know, maybe other makes and other models and maybe other brands, I'm finding the get to this image quality um, and with these features like how it works with the app and that, um, you're pretty much paying the same amount of money for for them as what you are for this, and they don't have um, they don't have range finders and that. So um, it's it's all well and good to say you know I shoot centerfire rifles and I shoot out far, but even with a centerfire when you're using thermal or even night vision sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between 200 meters and 300 meters you'll be quite surprised so knowing the range is important and if you're using anything like rim fires or particularly air rifles um i tend to use that stuff a lot through my work um you use that i probably fire 100 rounds out of 22 for every round i fire out of the center fire <coughs> um ranging is is super important so the fact that it's got the range fine in there the fact that i've compared it to my other range finders and it's extremely accurate um, it's always within a meter of each other with with my other um, high quality range finders. Um, that's just a huge pro. Um, the upgraded metal lens cap. Um, you're using bigger bigger lenses on these, so when you're using that, you want to have some security. You don't want that getting scratched. That's a very expensive part of the machine. And you know, if you mark it up, it's, it's not good. So the fact that they changed that metal metal cap. Um, the form factor, it's all quite um, usable. Everything is that, they're all pros. So there's a hell of a lot more pros than what there are cons. Conclusion. Um, 
I've really, really enjoyed using this. Um, with its uh, slightly larger lens, you know, 35 millimeters, is a bit of a jump up to what I've been using. So that extra detection range, um, where you can actually you'll pick things up further with this one that I have with the other models I've used that are you know 384 sensor or the, you know um, the 192. Um, I've just found that yeah that that um, sensor size gives you more detail, but the bigger lens. So going up to the 35 mil lens, I've noticed a big jump up in what I can see at distance. So I can see smaller objects, things like mice and moth, moths and whatnot flying around in the dark. I can see them out, you know, oh, I see moths at, you know, 150, 200 metres, you can see them flying through the air. So the, the larger lens with that extra sensitivity that it gives it has really allowed me to see more stuff, particularly smaller stuff, and see further as, it, as those two things go together. Um, the biggest, the, the bigger uh, sensor in it, that just helps with the clarity. So now I can see, say for instance, a fox out to about 300 metres. But now even if he's not moving, I can still see ears and I can see a tail and I can see legs. I'm not saying he's super clear, but I can tell it's a fox without him actually moving. Um, where with uh, um, some of the smaller models, you have to go by their movement and sort of roughly the size because there's no real detail there. But this does that. So this one, I think, as much as I've just said that I use it lots with rimfires and air rifles because of the laser rangefinder, and it's superb and the image is perfect at those distances, um, if you're using center fires and you're going out to sort of once you're out over 200 meters, sometimes the difference on um, between animals that are similar sizes are hard to tell um, or you can't tell the difference until they move. So this one is very good for the ranges that center fires use as well. So. Um, you, you're not having to wait for the uh, for movement of the animal to tell it what it is. So I'm going to say that this one is just probably the best all render I've used. The base mag of two magnification um, is definitely suitable for closer up stuff. It's got a wide field of view, and um, but also because of the size of the lens with the sensitivity and then the, the resolution from the sensor, it definitely puts it into the ballpark of um, of being very good for center fires. Um, you can have a a fox. Um, or, or, or a dog, some dog-sized animal standing in amongst sheep, and besides the fact that he's a bit smaller, you can still tell what he is definitely. And you're not, you know, you're not going to make a mistake between him and a lamb. You can see the fox. You can tell that it's a fox. It's sort of 300 meters, and you can tell it's not a lamb. So this one is definitely kicking it up into those center fire ranges. Although, as I've said, the range finder is a super important part of using like a 22 long rifle, for instance, because you need to know your holdovers. The difference between you know, 40 meters and 80 meters on a 22 is, a, is quite a lot of holdover with, with subsonic ammunition. So um, it's doing all of them very well. So that is my conclusion of it, as in for who it's for. Um, the form factor, everything that there is to like on it, um, I have enjoyed. I said that the only thing that it was a bit of annoyance was the microphone. So if you are someone who really needs to record audio, I don't know if they're going to be able to update now. I'm not sure if it's a, a firm, you know, firmware issue with the unit or whether it's actual hardware, um, you know, built into, you know, whatever the microphone is, whether there's a problem with it. Um, I said I haven't been able to use the audio. I haven't been able to hear it. My phone just says it's um, it's not a recognised format. So that is my conclusion. Um, if you're under um, and you need to know the ranges, and even if you're sort of saying, okay, well, I use a you know, 204 Ruger or a 223 or a 22 250, and I'm a very flat shooting rifle, at two to 300 metres and even a little bit beyond, the ability to tell the differences between the animals, between a lamb and, say, a fox, is pretty important. So they're very good for that. Um, I've found it really good for those open areas where you're scanning, you see something out of distance, you can stalk out, or you don't have to stalk as far because you can take shots at 200 metres and confidently know it's a fox and not a lamb. So that's a uh, that's a that's a big uh, big big pro for it, and that's probably one of the reasons why I'd recommend it. Um, while we're on the conclusion of it, is the price. These by the time you're jumping up to the high end units, um, this is sort of it's out of that budget range. This one I've seen it's sort of four thousand two hundred, four thousand two hundred and fifty around that mark. So it, it is a bit of an outlay. But if you're someone that's you know serious about your shooting and that's in your budget, I definitely recommend this one. Um, I haven't found another model that's um, in this sort of price bracket that gives you the size of the you know um, the size of the lens for that long extended range, you know, 1800 meters for a person type scenario, and um, have a rangefinder and, and have the high resolution sensor. That whole package that it's got 
there's no one else really doing it at that price point. So if your price, if the if your budget's there, um, I would highly recommend the FHR. Anyway, on that note, I'll um I'll end this video, and I just wanted to get back to a few of you guys have been asking me about um, infrared or thermal scopes. Um, I don't own any thermal scopes, um, but I'll try and see if any of the vendors will help me out and give me a loaner or something like that. If they can send me something that I can review, and I'll start trying to do maybe a couple of um, maybe something in the budget end and mid range or something like that, or maybe high end. I'm not sure because you know some of you guys want the best of the best, some of you guys are looking for the the most affordable. So I'll, I'll see if I can uh, contact some companies and see what they can come up with, and I'll try to do some thermal scopes, and um, we'll try and make that in the future, maybe in you know. If I can get my hands on them, I'll try getting some, some, some videos out about thermal rifle scopes. Anyway, on that note, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And um, if you um, have been enjoying these type of videos, um, let me know. Hit me up and down in, in, the, um, in, in, the, in the description a bit, or in the comments. Tell me what you sort of think of, you know, if you've used this, how you've sort of found it. Because a lot of people will read through and, and, um, and try and gain more information, you know, from other people. So if you've used one of these and, you know, if you've had any problems or some really good things or things that I've missed, um, drop it down in the comments below and let them know. And, and, and let me know if you'd um, like to see some rifle scopes as well, because, yeah, I'd be pretty interested in doing that. Um, I said I haven't used them. Uh, I use night vision, but um, I'd definitely like to try some thermal rifle scopes. And as I know from the comments, a few of you guys have asked me about them. So on that note, we'll uh, leave it at that, and I'll catch you for the next video. Bye for now.